The Hands of Justice are about to close on Jedediah Murphy. At the stroke of 6 p.m. on Tuesday, October 10th, 2023, he will be executed in the Walls Unit Execution Chamber inside the Huntsville State Penitentiary, Texas. Jedediah Murphy, a Jewish man, now 48 years old, stands on the edge of destiny, found guilty of the horrifying murder of 79-year-old Bertie Cunningham. This chilling event unfolded on October 4th, 2000 in Garland, Texas. For over 22 years, Jedediah has remained locked within the grim confines of Death Row, his existence a haunting whisper in the halls of justice. The question is, is he truly responsible for the crimes, or is this case entangled in the dark webs of anti-Semitic sentiments? Let's find out. Who is Jedediah Murphy? Jedediah Isaac Murphy hails from Texas and endured a troubled upbringing. He spent his early years living with his grandparents in Texas until the age of five. His mother faced severe abuse at the hands of his alcoholic father. I prayed that he would not come home at all anymore so many times because it was scary to watch him knock my mother out. After his grandmother's death, he was sent to an orphanage and later adopted by a family that subjected him to further mistreatment. Subsequently, he was removed from this family and placed in foster care, eventually being adopted by another family. At the young age of 13, he turned to alcohol as a form of self-medication. By the time he was 16, he was living independently. Interestingly, his original name was Jim Kynes but he was given the name Jedediah Murphy by one of his foster families. Jedediah is said to be diagnosed with Dissociative Identity Disorder, a condition triggered by childhood abuse and trauma, leading to behavioral changes and memory gaps. Perhaps that's why he claims to have no recollection of the murder he is accused of. Dissociative Identity Disorder develops when a person fails to form a total personality that integrates all aspects of yourself and your emotions. He did manage to graduate from high school though. Before his arrest, he even held various jobs as a welder, contractor, and laborer. Do you think someone with memory issues can do these jobs and graduate from high school? However, his past also includes prior arrests and time served on burglary charges. He was released from prison in 1994 on probation. The murder. On October 4th, 2000, in Garland, a grim event unfolded. Murphy, wielding a gun, coerced a 79-year-old white woman named Bertie Cunningham into giving him a ride. After roughly 30 minutes of driving, Murphy forced the victim into the trunk of the car, where she was tragically shot while attempting to comply. According to reports, Murphy later claimed that it was an accident and he didn't mean to shoot her. But his actions after his chilling crime prove otherwise. After shooting poor Bertie, Murphy proceeded to drive the victim's car to Van Zandt County, where he callously removed her from the trunk and subjected her to a harrowing fate by drowning her in a creek. To add to the horror of this crime, Murphy then used the victim's credit cards to purchase alcohol and cigarettes doesn't it sound like he had no guilt or remorse? All of this information appears to point to Murphy's guilt. But what if the people revealing these details are not telling the truth? The sentence. Murphy's arrest occurred just two days later. He not only confessed to the murder, but also guided the police to the whereabouts of the victim's body. Subsequently, Murphy faced charges, was convicted, and ultimately received a death sentence by lethal injection for his involvement in the crime. That the judge who sentenced him to death row was known to make racial and anti-Semitic comments. With his execution date drawing near, there's a heated debate about the validity of this case. This debate stems from concerns that the judicial system may have a history of harboring anti-Semitic sentiments. Do you agree? Why are people against this execution? Numerous petitions and protests from Jewish communities have rallied against Jedediah Murphy's impending execution. His attorneys and defense team are also working to save him from this fate. 
Renowned legal expert Alan Dershowitz has joined the effort to help Jedediah Murphy. Dershowitz has some strong legal reasons for wanting Murphy's sentence to be changed to life in prison. I have no sympathy for an anti-Semite. First, during Murphy's trial, the prosecutors suggested that he was involved in another crime without having enough proof. Even though he was never charged for that crime, there's strong evidence indicating he didn't do it. Secondly, the jury was told to recommend the death penalty if they thought Murphy might continue to be violent. But Dershowitz argues that the jury's decision was wrong, because Murphy hasn't shown violent behavior for over 20 years. Lastly, Dershowitz stresses that Murphy has a history of mental illness that the court didn't take seriously enough. Murphy has been in the hospital for mental health issues and experienced psychosis in the past. Do you believe this is a valid reason? Could there be anti-Semitic hatred hiding behind these hasteful decisions of the court or investigators? Additionally, new documents given to a US court have revealed some surprising facts. They suggest that a detective gave false information during Murphy's trial, which led to his death sentence. These documents also raise concerns about using an expired and possibly damaged drug for Murphy's execution. The detective wrongly claimed that there were no clear fingerprints found at the crime scene. But Murphy's lawyer argues that there was evidence to the contrary. Also, the drug pentabarbital, meant for Murphy's execution, is way past its expiration date and might have been affected by a recent fire. Using pentobarbital. 33 states in the US currently authorize executions using lethal injection. Murphy's legal team says that using expired and altered pentobarbital could cause serious health problems and make his execution very painful. The documents also mention past cases where inmates suffered pain and burning sensations during executions with pentobarbital. Because of these worries, the legal filings are trying to stop Murphy's execution. They point out problems with the evidence from his trial and the possibility of a messed up execution because of the compromised drug. Murphy's case has received support from legal experts, activists, and the Jewish community, all asking for a review of his sentence. The bottom line. Murphy's case is complicated, and there are many things we don't fully understand. When a case is unclear and uncertain, it raises important questions about whether the death penalty is valid or if it needs further investigation. Will the petitions be successful or will Murphy be punished for his crime? We'll have to wait until the execution day to find out. Do you think the defense's claims are valid? Share your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video.